Another truckload of concrete masonry units, often called concrete block, will soon be on its way to some construction job. The mortar is placed in two separate strips. This is done both for the horizontal or bed joints and for the vertical or end joint. This film was released by the Portland Cement Association in the 1940s, showing how concrete masonry units or CMU blocks were made and how they were used. However, nothing has really changed in terms of CMU block construction since the 1900s. The blocks themselves are the same, the method of construction is the same, there hasn't been any drastic improvement in the technology. For comparison, here's a recent video of a person laying CMU block. It's almost exactly the same. Even though CMU construction grew popular in the mid-20th century, it was actually created much earlier. The first hollow concrete block was designed in 1890 by Harmon S. Palmer in the United States. It hasn't really changed much since then, either in composition or in its shape. It's made from a mixture of Portland cement and an aggregate like sand or fine gravel or even fly ash. They come in modular sizes with 16 inches by 8 by 8 being the most popular. There are several different types of concrete masonry units. Solid concrete blocks are the heaviest but are good for load-bearing walls. Stretcher blocks are the most used hollow concrete blocks in construction. Corner blocks are used for window or door openings in a manner that one of their sides is visible. Pillar blocks are also called double corner blocks and are used when both ends are visible. Jam blocks are used when there's an elaborate window opening in the wall. Partition blocks are used to build partition walls, as the name suggests. Lintel blocks have a deep groove that is used to lay a beam and rebar reinforcement and it's filled with concrete. Frogged brick blocks have a groove on top of the brick that can hold mortar. Bullnose blocks are similar to corner blocks, but they have rounded edges. Half blocks are used to finish a course without cutting full blocks. Bond beam blocks have their webs knocked out to make room for horizontal rebar. Finally, we have double or single open-end bond beam blocks. CMU has many advantages over other types of construction. It doesn't attract mildew or rot and it's resistant to termites. But the blocks are bulky and conventional CMU units still require multiple trades to be on site at the same time to coordinate electrical, plumbing, insulation and other systems. So why don't we rethink the shape of these blocks? I found a couple of examples of new CMU block designs around the world. The first is the Block Armo system or ARMO, which consists of concrete bricks that are fully interlocking, motorless and self-aligning. They can be assembled without any binders or mixtures and their design is so intuitive that there's no need for skilled labor when using them. These armor blocks consist of six different pieces that are shaped similar to jigsaw puzzle pieces. The blocks have holes that align for rebar and concrete reinforcement. The company hopes that these simple interlocking blocks will encourage low-income families to build their own homes and improve their quality of life. I found another pretty wild concrete design by Habitera Block Company. They're a Chinese company that sells the CMU block machine on Alibaba. You can create any block design you want just by switching out the mold. They have some pretty crazy and unnecessarily elaborate concrete blocks. Not only is their website suspicious, but I don't think their bricks are very practical or functional. They're very gimmicky. That being said, having a machine that can create any size or shape of blocks can lead to some creative solutions. The last and most interesting new CMU block design I found was the mineral-built modular concrete unit designed by two architects in Austin, Texas. It's an 18-inch long by 8-inch tall by 10-inch deep block. I made a scaled-down 3D printed version of this brick to demonstrate its advantages over traditional CMU blocks. The units can be laid in alternating left-handed and right-handed courses. You wouldn't need any specially cut end units, corner units, or framing units around doors and windows. It obviously occupies a lot less space because of its size. It has a void incorporated in the design for rebar and concrete, but it also has a big void on the inside of the wall for utilities. Because of its shape, 
you could fit 120 units on a pallet for transportation compared to 90 units of typical CMU blocks. These 120 units can build a 120 square foot wall compared to an 80 square foot wall made of traditional blocks. Here's a full scale mock-up showing the installation of flashing, bond beam units, horizontal rebar and metal furring via stainless steel zip ties. Moreover, the wall accommodates wall reinforcement, insulation, wiring, plumbing and telecom connections after installation. This is a huge advantage that typical CMU blocks cannot provide. You have to frame out an additional wall in front of these CMU blocks for insulation and wiring. It ultimately shortens the construction schedule. Overall, I'm really impressed with the design. I think it's still experimental though because I haven't seen any of these blocks available for purchase on their website. It's a good step forward towards rethinking traditional CME block walls though. Links to all the videos and the websites that I mentioned are provided in the description below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm Belinda, thanks for watching.